So what's up Freedom Foods family and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about a question that I got recently on one of the last videos and it's a good one, it's a very good one. And the question is based around hay and if it doesn't rain too hard I might be able to shoot this video. If not, uh, we might have to, we're going to have to postpone this for a second. We're going to have to postpone this for a second. Now we're under a tree, so it gives us a little bit of protection. Now the question is, is in this regenerative agriculture space where we're actually trying to improve the land, not just degrade it just like everybody else does, um, how do you feed hay? Now there's two main ways. There's two main ways, and both of them, in my opinion, are correct. Are 100% correct. Why? Because the two people that are most famous for these ways, uh, they're, legends, they're, they're legends in the industry. Joel Salatin with his deep bedding system and Greg Judy with his bale unrolling system. Now, I've done both. I've done both here in Northeast Texas, okay? And that's important I say Northeast Texas because I feel like one way works a little bit better for us right now. Is that going to be the, the, the same thing in the future? Maybe, maybe not. See, the first year... See the first year that I was here, I see, see the first year that we were here, I unrolled hay. And the way I did it is I wanted to see, I knew that the, about these two different methods and I wanted to kind of just see which is the best one to go with. <laughs> I actually had the bales placed out in the pasture and uh, when it was time to feed hay in that particular paddock, I pushed it. I pushed it, I unrolled it, and I said, let's just let's just see if I like this method first before I go get a bale unroller and go get all that fun stuff, okay? Second year, I locked the cows up in our corrals. Not right up here, but down in the main part of the corrals where the calves are. And what I did is I fed hay in a similar-ish way to how Joel does it over at Polyface. Um, the only exception is that I don't have a roof. And I think the roof would make a big difference too. And then what I'm using for bedding is instead of using square bales fed out of, uh, you know, troughs and putting down wood chips behind them, well, I can't feed out of, you know, kind of wooden troughs because horns, they don't fit very well on those. So I just get these round bales and I put them out and the excess waste seems to be enough, seems to be enough bedding for it to mix with the manure and then turn into compost. Now that's actually the way that I really prefer for a couple reasons. Reason number one, let's talk about the area. Northeast Texas, we don't really, I mean, if you ask somebody in Wisconsin or Minnesota, we don't have a winter. Like it doesn't usually get too cold. We've had the snowpocalypse happen while we were here where it got down to, what was it negative 12, two and a half feet of snow. That was a lot, okay? But that's a once in 120 year storm. But this is kind of our normal temperatures, our normal winter. It is uh, December 13th and uh, that is our weather right now. 64 degrees out. I probably don't even need a sweatshirt. I thought it looked a little bit colder than out before I went outside. But this is kind of normal-ish. Sure, will it freeze? Yes. Will it uh, get down to, um, you know, maybe the teens for a couple days? Last year was like, we had like three or four days to where it was like, okay, it, it's cold. The other days, yeah, it'll freeze in the, in the, in the at night warm up by 9 10 o'clock water is able to be moved around our water lines above ground and we're able to use that for 99.9% .9 of the year there's a few days that you know you just got to watch out for it that being said and this is just an opinion there's no you know scientific data backed up behind it but it's just kind of observation and sometimes i feel like that's a lot better for years for years and years and years and years decades maybe even longer um cows were just turned out on this land here and you know Farmers will go put a bale out and they'll eat it, and then they'll go put it over that way and they'll eat it. But they had access to the pasture. They had access to the entire pasture. And uh, whenever cool season grasses would grow up, they take the they they prefer the cool season grasses over the hay. Why? Because it's fresh. It's what they're supposed to eat. You know, in nature, there's no hay being made. When you have uh, constrictions of fences, and you, you know they're not migrating across continents. There needs to be hay being made. But that being said, because it stays so much warmer down here, we're able to have grasses grow up. Uh, it's not covered by snow most of the time. It's there available for them. So anytime it grows up a little bit, they eat it. It grows up a little bit, they eat it. It grows up a little bit, they eat it. And I feel like in our area, our cool season grasses 
are basically ex the, the, they're almost extinct it's actually pretty sad you look around and it's just brown 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 everywhere you see is brown why again the cool season grasses you know they've been grazed out of the pastures which is sad. But because of our methods of taking them off pasture, putting them in, um, you know, what do you want to call it? A sacrifice lot? Maybe a sacrifice lot. It's not really a sacrifice lot because I'm make, making productive compost out of uh, the, the hay and the manure that's being left over there. But what happens is, and you're going to see the difference right now, um, when you allow those cool season grasses to grow up, this is what it looks like. See, there's the neighbors over there. That's, that's all brown, okay? Look at this, look at this. All this lush green grass. This You don't see this anywhere else. You don't even say, see this in hay meadows. Why? Because most of this grass, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, don't hold me to this, it's green grass that the cows like, okay? But I'm pretty sure this is plantain. And this, this is a, a um, cool season grass that grows up, majority of it, there's a lot of rye, and uh, you see some, in different areas you see you'll see some vetch in areas where there's not as much plantain there's actually a lot of clover you see we have clover growing up all in here but either because the cows have been just turned out and they're allowed to graze this as soon as it pops up or secondly we have a problem with this if, if you've watched the channel for any length of time you guys know the bear of my existence goat weed this is uh woolly crotton this is the number one weed in this area drives me nuts okay we're working on it we're working on it and most farmers around here hate this stuff too why because if especially if you just let cows continuously graze this stuff will take over your entire pasture like it needs to be cut it needs to be shredded a lot of people's opinion around here it needs to be sprayed and there's a couple things that you can use to spray it that'll kill it one of them is graze on and another one is let me get this right 2,4-D um, it's a, it's a spray that will go and kill the broadleaf plants, uh, mostly goat weed. Now, when you spray that on, because I've looked at this, I looked up what it kills, what it doesn't allow to grow. Number one, clover. If you, you They're saying, oh yeah, if you want to keep clover in your pastures, you have to spray it at a very particular time. If not, it's going to kill your clover. Okay, well, now we know why we don't spray around here. Now we know why our clover is coming back so strong. Second thing is plantain because I think because it's a broadleaf it also says it kills plantain why would you want to kill this stuff the cows are in the permanent paddock looking through the, the the gate drooling over this you want to make this look like this look we have a ground cover over here of all green all green now do we want it all one you know monoculture no 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 you know we have st other stuff growing up in here don't know exactly what that is but I know the cows will eat it but we have all kinds of grasses growing up and this is great because if the cows like it I like it simple as that see this is the second year that we've pulled them off pasture and we're seeing look hairy vetch grow up like crazy like crazy in December in December so we're allowing our land to rest and recover and regrow and be able to heal itself and some of the the cool season plants that were grazed too hard and grazed almost out of existence are allowing to uh, we're allowing them to to you know get a foothold again to be able to go to seed and be able to spread be able to multiply like that because I guarantee you I guarantee you if the cows were out here there wouldn't be anything here there's there would be nothing out here why because they'll prefer this over the hay and graze this out to oblivion now that being said if we were to unroll hay on our pastures like we did the first year um, the cows would still have access to these paddocks and I just don't feel like we can give a long enough rotation for as as hard as the the cool season grasses have been grazed out here to allow it to establish itself now after it establishes itself maybe it's a different story maybe it's a different story to where you know we can we have enough to where there's there's grazable winter grass now i know up in um up in missouri don't i don't know the grass is there anywhere near like i know them here and i don't know them here well enough but they have a lot of fescue and that's uh 
cruel season grass and it's you know very established there I don't feel like our, our cool season grasses are established here well enough yet to be able to go unroll hay and get the benefits of letting the, the grass grow up. I just don't think that we can even give close to a long enough rotation. Because like last year, I uh, in late January, I turned the cows out. Um, not turned them out, well, they started a rotation. They started a rotation for two or three weeks around the farm just to kind of a quick graze um, because I saw green grass. This year, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. This year, I don't know if I'm gonna um, do the same thing because I could probably have them graze this right now, but it's just not enough because I see, I still see bare spots. I still see spots where there's not enough green. You want this to be super, it's hard to walk through. That's where I want them to be able to graze at. So I think this year, I'm just gonna keep them on hay and take them off hay maybe a little bit sooner as spring starts to hit. Because in the future, as this begins to spread, as this begins to grow up all throughout the farm, everywhere, everywhere it looks like this, it's gonna reduce our hay bill significantly. And uh, we won't have to feed as much hay, nearly as much hay, when we have winter pasture, winter grazing available. And that's how I'd like to prefer it, because I know for a fact that that'll keep the cows healthier than hay. Just simply because that's what they're supposed to eat. Now, what are the benefits of unrolling hay? Well, what you're doing is you're spreading a whole bunch of carbon, say like on a bare spot like we have right, right there, okay? When you unroll hay, it's leaving a whole bunch of seed, it's covering up a bare spot, it's adding carbon straight to the ground. And uh, you get to keep the cows on pasture, so you might not have to feed as much hay if you have enough cool season grasses growing up. So that's a big, big benefit. And then when you roll out hay, you can kind of target certain areas and the cows will kind of poop in those certain areas um, the where you can help you fertilize your pastures more, increase fertility, and just make that section better. Now, the first year we did that, do we see a huge difference? Not a huge one, some, some, not a huge one. The first year that we locked them up, do we see a huge difference in our pastures? Yes. What I showed you right there, the, the, um, what I'm showing you here, all the, the cool season grass is starting to come back, starting to get established, being allowed to grow up. That's a big reason why we switched to this method of a deep bedding system. Now, why does the deep bedding system work? Well, in the, um, in the winter time, a lot of the, the microbes in the ground, they start to just kind of hibernate. They, they go dormant for a few months out of the year. Now in Texas, do we get that same um, thing? Maybe a few weeks out of the year, they go dormant. So what we're doing is um, by having the hay mixed with the manure, we're capturing the, the manure nutrients and storing them for, until we have a time to where we can go spread them back out in the pastures. So we're, we're adding carbon well, we're not adding carbon, we're, we're using carbon, excess carbon, the waste of the hay, um, to create soil, which, does, which is the same kind of process, just a different way than unrolling hay. And then we're gonna spread this out on our trouble areas all throughout the pasture. Like we have spots where there's still a lot of ragweed. Um, I wanna put the, the llamas kinda tight on there next year because they'll eat all that. Um, there's still, you know, there's still, I'll show you right here, right here. I'm coming up on one of them. Where you see these kind of brownish gray spots, you can kind of see the outline right there. That's, this is a ragweed, site, ra ragweed section. Um, I'd like to come grab a load of the compost that we made, maybe two loads, spread it out right here. Guess what? Uh, next year, this is gonna be one of the best spots rather than one of the worst. So we're doing the same thing. We're doing the exact same thing. Now, um, when you just put them in a, a, a sacrifice lot, if you wanna call it, and put them in a, um, in a deep bedding system, it also reduces your workload substantially because you're not having to, you know, you can have the water trough in one spot. You can have the cows in one spot. You're not having to set up electric fence. All you have to do is move hay, put out water, check on their mineral, and uh, like today, I didn't have to do anything because I put out hay a couple days ago with Tavin. It's just check, check, they have water, check, uh, mineral, check, everybody's good, check, you're done. And with as much work as there to be done on the farm, with as much stuff as we do here, you need a little bit of a break. And this little bit of a break does help tremendously for us to get other projects done, for us to, you know, shoot more videos, for us to just, it, it, it 
just need a break. And this is one of the spots where we fed hay last year. And as you can see here, look at this. This is, look, the grass is trying to grow in it and everything right now. This is amazing compost. This is just, you can talk about building soil, we're just gonna go put tons and tons and tons of soil. Cause this probably goes down um, maybe about, a, maybe a foot, maybe more. And then we have more on the other side and then we're creating more this year. You know what's going to grow up in this in the springtime? This is going to be incredible. Look, the grasses are trying to grow right now. But, you know, there's not much seed in there because most of it got, you know, composted down. It's just stuff that's blown in or stuff that survived. Imagine that. I mean, this used to be hay and cow poop. That's all this is. This is all this is. Hay and cow poop. Maybe some leaves that fell from the tree that helped add a little bit more carbon. This is nice. It's fluffy. This is better than, you know... How many bags of, uh, of potting soil do you need to get in, in order to match what I have just right there? This is thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of it. And uh, this is literally building soil right before your eyes. So we're importing the carbon with the hay and we're turning it into soil. And I love it. But like I said, that this is not a set way. Once we have our cool season grasses established, we might switch to unrolling hay. Why? Because we might not need uh, we might not need that much hay. We might not need to lock them up for you know months on end. We're just letting our ground recover, and it's doing a great job. Why? Because you know even after this drought, you know it's raining right now, but even after this crazy terrible drought that we've had really the last two years, um, it's still making significant progress, and it's just incredible, really incredible to see. All the grasses come back. All the the land starting to heal itself more and more and more. And uh, come five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I'm gonna be patting myself on the back, thanking myself, going, "Yeah, you were right. You were right." And uh, well, at least I think so. And I like to brag a little bit. And uh, we'll be able to keep cows on um, on pasture much longer. And it's happening everywhere. Look. They're front pasture, front pasture right here. Look, there's a there's one of the chicken tractors that you come get when it's not so sloshy out. Look at that. Look at that runway there that you see from uh, one of the chicken tractors that is down there. That's incredible. Look how much greener that is. What we're having all the plantain, the rye grass, maybe uh, some I don't know orchard grass. There's definitely a lot of vetch and uh, and clover that's trying to grow up in there. But it doesn't happen overnight and you got to kind of stick to your guns and see it through and I just can't wait to start spreading our uh, first loads of, uh, of compost out on the on the pastures and seeing really this uh, this upcoming spring how much better it gets and uh, that'll just be a kind of feel good vindication moment for me and no we're really, we really are improving this place. So with that, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help us with the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, all right? So next time, see ya, bye.